Mickens, let's get on with this tutorial. We've got dance team practice. Yeah, it's time to get this body in motion, okay? Oh, girl, please do not mention any terms like that. You know he got- When dealing with motion, oh, you're dealing with quantities. So how far something has moved, how fast it moved, how quickly or slowly it has done that. But all of these don't mean much if you don't talk about how they're related to time. All of these quantities are functions of time. They're related. And one of the best ways to represent those relationships are through graphs. Graphs show us the relationship between two variables. Do you know what this graph is showing us? Um, it looks like it's showing how fast the- No, it's not. Excuse me, you didn't have to cut me off like that. You, you don't know what this graph is showing you. Oh, God. This could be the number of text messages per day or the graduation rate of a school by school year, or the position of an object as time goes by. No matter what, you first identify a graph by reading the axes of the graph. Each graph has an X and Y axis. I like to read it like this. This graph is showing the Y axis over X axis. So this graph is showing position over time. But once you do that, it doesn't matter much if you don't know what the variables mean. So make sense of what the graph is showing you by defining each variable. Like, what does position even mean? Um, where an object is? So this graph is showing where the object is as time goes by. Right. So now we can use the graph to describe trends or to analyze the data from it. Is this object's position changing? Yes. Well, if its position is changing, well, that means this can be called the object's displacement. Oh well, yeah. We can see clearly what the object is doing just by looking at this graph. If his position has gone from zero meters to three meters, that means he's moving forward. Straight upward diagonals mean the object is moving forward at a constant velocity. If it's a curve, well then the velocity is not constant. So moving forward on the graph, if that's the case, what was the object doing next? I'm standing still. How do you know? Well, its position hasn't changed, so it must not be moving. Exactly. Horizontal lines mean that the object is not moving or at rest on a position time graph. So these downward lines must mean the object is going backwards? Absolutely. Let's look at another graph. Can you describe what this object is doing? Ooh, so it's sitting at rest and then it moves backwards for some seconds and then... Ah, ah, ah. What is this graph showing you? Oh, my bad. It's showing velocity over time. Yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely. This is showing you how fast the object is going in a certain direction as time goes by. Oh, uh, so this means the object was already going four meters per second, then slowed down to a stop, and then slowed down again? slow down again from rest it, it it can't because that's not what's happening right there so think about it velocity is displacement divided by time so if velocity is negative during this interval well that must mean the displacement is negative and negative displacement simply means the object is moving in the opposite direction. So this part of the graph means that the object is speeding up just in the opposite direction. Oh, okay, so straight upward diagonals mean that the object is speeding up. Horizontal lines means a constant velocity or no acceleration. And downward diagonals mean slowing down. And anything below the x-axis means it's traveling backwards. Jeez, just let me go dance. But that's not all. I've got more. Oh my God. Besides just looking at the graphs, 
There's much more we can do with them using math. Ah, I hate this class. Oh my doing gosh, math. please calm down. It's just subtraction and division with a calculator. Like, why are y'all so saying? Right, like that. Y'all not even know why. They don't even math. Exactly. Since we clearly see that the velocity is changing, well, that must mean we can figure out the acceleration from this graph. And if we wanted to figure out its acceleration from 10 to 15 seconds, let's use the equation we talked about last class. Um, that was like a year ago. Uh, I lose track of time. So, final velocity minus initial velocity divided by final time minus initial time. So, the initial time in the problem is 10 seconds from 10. And the initial velocity at 10 seconds is four meters per second. The final time is 15 seconds. And the final velocity was zero meters per second. Negative four divided by five. And you will get the acceleration was negative 0 0.8 meters per second squared. The car's velocity was decreasing by 0 0.8 meters per second every second. All right, you did say he was slowing down. You know, that equation looks just like the slope equation we use in math. Well, it actually is. Taking the slope of a velocity time graph will give you the acceleration of an object. And this works for position time graphs too. Taking the slope of a position time graph will give you velocity of an object. But wait, there's more. Since velocity is measuring displacement as time goes by, well then rearranging that equation means that the area under the graph would give us the displacement. So let's see, how far did the car travel during this interval? Or what was its change in position? What shape is this? What shape is this? We are going back and forth between too many different concepts today. Like what? Y'all don't know shapes? It's a triangle, Mr. Mickens. Oh my gosh. And how can we find the area of a triangle? Um, half base times height? Absolutely. So, how long is this base? Uh, 10 to 15, that's 5. Right. The height? Uh, 4. 4? Yeah. Cool. Half of the base is 2.5. Mm-hmm. So, 2.5 times 4. The displacement is 10 meters. That's how far they went in that time interval. And just know, if we had to get other displacements, like these rectangles here, they'd just be length times width. Um, if I wanted to come to geometry tutorial, I would have. <laughs> Going back and forth between these graphs takes a bit of practice. But if you follow these steps, you'll be fine. But you'll never escape graphs. They help us to analyze so much data in our world, from landing planes and the velocity of storms, and so much more. So, get more practice on our website. And thanks oh, for watching. What? Thanks for watching. Girl, he thinks we're on a TV show or something. I don't know. Like, just play along with it.